Some businesses succeed, some don't. Then there are those that seem to have been around forever. The true entrepreneurial success story. How did they do it? What was their vision? What makes a success? In this special episode for Eye on Annapolis, we speak with the true success stories, those business owners that have been around for decades, learn from their successes and failures. Now, here's host John Fernay. Well, hello, Jennifer Kay. Hi there. How are you? you I'm are great. Ca- you're a captain, Jennifer Kay. I am a captain. You are. That's kind of cool. Yeah, um, for like 23 years. 23 years. Well, Jennifer Kay is the captain and the owner of of there's probably a corporate name but it's the schooner woodwinds um, which are the two beautiful boats that sit down on ego alley just outside of the annapolis waterfront hotel that i almost called the marriott yeah at pusser's caribbean (laughs) grill yes (laughs) absolutely and this is this is part of our legacy business series and you guys have been around just uh, I i would say my forever because i moved here in 96 you've always been a staple on there and we want to talk and sort of investigate like how these businesses did it where do they start from how do they get here where are they and and what does the future look like so i guess one of the things is where did where did it start i mean were you born into sailing here in annapolis um no so my mom and dad and i all lived in connecticut and my mom and dad were school teachers oh you're a yankee yeah <laughs> and uh they were school teachers and when i grew up learning how to um, sail along with them because they learned to sail together once they got married. And uh, so I was just brought along. And then time kept moving and I started teaching kids how to sail at age 14, 15, 16. And, uh, and then I went to college and I started a sailing team in college. And then I did a semester at sea in college aboard a 125-foot schooner. And that's when everything changed. I came home from that and I was like, oh my God, I want to sail schooners for the rest of my life. So what were you, what were you sailing as when your parents were learning to sail? Was this, were these? So, you know, those little 14, 17 foot sailboats out there. Like it's called like the O'Day Day Sailor. Yeah, well, okay. we the, had one, like the, a, the ones the power boat We had a hate. real cheap version, like <laughs> a, st- a tall star 14 or something like that. So and, this is a real small little boat. Yeah. And then like a Venture 21, like, you know, we'd go to, we'd sail from Connecticut to Greenport, Long Island okay, that's overnight. Just- three people on this little tiny boat wow yeah i can't i can't even fathom it right now but and then you got the bug on a 125 foot schooner and then where how did that and so when my dad was teaching so he was teaching elementary instrumental music in connecticut in the hamden school system and my mom was teaching art and photography in Madison, Connecticut, in the high school area. They, uh, my dad was called and said, we need to uh, move you to now general music. They're cutting elementary instrumental music from the program. And I was just about graduating from college. And I said, Dad, what are you going to do? He goes, I don't know. I need to start up a business. And after a couple ideas were thrown around, I said, what about sailing? Wow. And that was about six, six to eight weeks before I graduated college. So they pulled his career out from under him. Yeah. Well, I guess it's lucky that it was done just after you got out of college. Well, they gave him a year. <laughs> okay. So they, fin- they finished him out, and then he had one more year. Mm-hmm. And so they were going to early retire him, so he would have his benefits, and he would have his pension. And... Jennifer said, hey, Dad, I've got a great way to spend that pension. I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> and what was it? Why, why aren't you doing this in Connecticut? Well, we found that most Connecticut towns that had tourism in there, they all had their schooners. And that was most of New England. Found a place in Portland, Maine that probably could support a schooner. And then a place in Charleston that could support a schooner. But it wasn't built up yet. Now it's a great spot. Right. Um, and, uh, and then there was Annapolis and we settled on Annapolis clearly because of where it was, the closeness to DC, Baltimore and a great Metro area. And the opportunity to support a schooner, obviously. Yeah. So you the, the boat brought you here. Yeah. Did I you, moved here October 92. Did you have the boat? No. Uh, okay. Not when we, uh, we had to have it built and, uh, from scratch. Somehow this doesn't seem like it's like going in the right order here. I mean, it's like, okay, so we're going to find a place to live to run boat charters, but we don't have a boat yet. Well, you have to have a plan 
before you build it. Right. Right? So you, sure. if you build it, it will come. Well, we're not like that. Yeah. Okay. It's like you find where the need is, and then you could probably get a small business loan to then be able to get your dream built. So the schooner got built in, yes. you said, 93? It was finished in 93. In Albany, New York, we sailed her down and started being really in business by July 4th, but we were doing some work in June. Tell me about the boat. I mean, how did did you design this boat, or was this like out of a Sears catalog? Or it was not the Sears catalog, <laughs> but it was out of a newspaper, um, and it was this yellow newspaper called Boats and Harbors, and it was this new upcoming boat builder, John Scarano, um, Scarano Boat Building, and he was the architect and. My dad had gotten the opportunity to sail on a boat like it because of the ad in this right. newspaper. And um, it was built in Newport. My dad sailed upon it, smile across his face, like ear to ear. I remember I was with my friend from college and I looked at her and I said, I'm going to be in the sailing business. And Just, sure enough, one year later, we were. That's amazing. So this was built in Albany, New York. Yeah. Uh, off of a... An ad in a newspaper. Advertising works, apparently. Yeah, it did, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, who, who would have who, who known? I know. Um, for those that have not been on the, the schooner woodwinds, first of all, shame on you. But they are a 74-foot schooner. I say yeah. I, I, schooners because you got two of them. But there's, right. there's two schooners. They're 74-foot, and they hold about 48, 48 passengers each. I mean, is that the size of the boat that you wanted? I mean, schooners come in all sizes. Well, yeah, they do. But there were some... There's a lot of Coast Guard regulations, and one of the Coast Guard regulations is about stability, and they start breaking down stability into a certain amount of passengers. And when you build a business proposal and you do the business plan, you start figuring out how many people do I need to get on the boat in order to start making money. And so you start figuring out that that lucky number is 49 because okay. after that, you have to have way more regulations on a boat bigger. Right. So um, then you start working your way backwards. Then how can we make this the most beautiful boat that anybody ever saw that everybody wants to sail on? Okay, so you worked with off of, off of a number that was working on a balance sheet and then designed the boat and to the to the look and the size of it, I guess. Yeah, and we also, my mom is impeccable about following details and she followed three or four different companies to see what was working and what wasn't. I mean, because you could do it in multiple ways. You could go sailing four times a day like we do or you could go out for a week and only take eight passengers. Okay. Right? There's right. lots of different opportunities. How do you do it? And you guys like the four times a day. Yeah. Now, the schooner woodwind does sail four times a day during the height of the season, and your season runs, what, May? You say between the two scariest days of the year, April 13th to Halloween, or April 15th through Halloween, tax okay. day to Halloween, yep. Okay, and to get on the schooner woodwind, you head on, you can obviously go to your website, and we'll put that in the show notes, but you can go down to the dock at the Annapolis Waterfront Hotel right there in front of Pussers and purchase a ticket and... Uh, you, you, you sort of ease your sailings in each year because of the sun and the daylight savings time and everything else. Yeah, you know? so mean, we you, start you like- two trips a day in April, then goes to three trips a day in May. Mid-May trips goes to four trips. And, um, I mean, you can, as you said, you can walk up. You can buy your tickets online. You can give a call and buy your tickets um, up to six days prior for any cruise you want to go on. Where did the second sailboat come from? <laughs> the same boatyard. Okay. So we decided four years into being in business that we, if we were to grow, we needed a, another boat. And why not have an identical boat so we can do some really fun team building programs where we race each boat against each other. And you can only do that if you have the same exact boat. That's sort of like the Southwest Airlines model. You know, you have the same model airplane flying the same thing. They just don't do team building. They don't race the planes. Right. <laughs> Uh, oh God! <laughs> uh, figure, there, there, there's an idea of burning building right there. But so, so you've you've got the. You, how long ago did the second woodwind come in into play? You said it was finished five years after the first one. Okay, the two boats have some notoriety as well. Yeah. Um, so woodwind two, the newest one being built was um in the movie the wedding crashers i remember that movie yeah everybody does tommy boy come on back man the woodwind for a while (laughs) that's right yeah 
How was now? How was that? What did you just lease that out to the production company and let them take it, or did no? They, no, they had to have a captain and crew, and okay. that that's how the boat works because it's a Coast Guard certified vessel. So I was the captain on board for all of that, and you uh, don't look a damn thing like I know, Christopher Walken. I know I had to hide underneath the helm, the wheel, and actually steer the boat while he was standing right above me, Pretending. actually steering the boat, acting, yeah. <laughs> acting. Yes, <laughs> that is that's pretty cool. So that's and how long how long did that take to film? They used us for about seven days. For about 12 minutes worth of screen time or something like that? Uh, one something? and a half minutes. How many? One and a half minutes. Oh, my word. Yeah. It seems so much longer. Right smack dab in the middle of the movie. Yeah. Hour and five minutes, I think. And, and that was at the, what, Inna Perry Cabin? Inna Perry Cabin is was their home. where they, not their home. That's where they had the wedding where he, where Owen Wilson met Rachel McAdams. Okay. Yeah. Now, where was the home? That, there was three homes. One was in L.A. to do all the inside work. Okay. The second one was on Peach Blossom Creek near Oxford. And that's the one that you see where they're having the, the football, football game. game and they're swinging on the tree swing. Right. And the front of the house. And then where the dock was, was actually up on the Y River near Ken Island. Oh, wow. And that's where we filmed them getting on and off the boat. That's all we right. filmed. We filmed the sailing in three different places. One was in the Chop Tank River near La Trappe, Maryland. Um, the second one was in the uh, Miles River near St. Michael's um, for the helicopter shots. Right. And the third one was in the Y River, yeah. Man, you're like ruining Hollywood here for me. I'm that's, sorry. Uh, that's, that's, that's okay. Well, no, it's fascinating to see that. So it was only a, min- a couple minutes. That's, but what's interesting is if you look at the color of the water in that movie, they did not colorize it. It is because when they were filming on the Chop Tank River, the part where it's the part where they're really on the boat right. most of the time, that color of the water almost looks like the Caribbean. And that's because the water is that much clearer and bluer in that region of the Chesapeake. Well, you mentioned clear water. And you guys, I've been out on the woodwind several times. And you guys are always so environmentally friendly. I mean, you are a... Oh, and, 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 and you have to be. I mean, you know, I've seen you guys stop and, and pull crap out of the bay. Um, yeah. And it's, it's amazing how much stuff is in there. But... Uh, you guys are very, very environmentally friendly. You're great stewards of the bay. You're, uh, you know, cut off. Uh, it's sort of a self-serving, but you cut off the engine as soon as possible because the the good stuff is when the sails goes up. Absolutely. Um, and and the experience on the woodwind is just wonderful because you can sit back and drink a beer, which is that's sort of my preferred role. Uh, other <laughs> other other people can you know hoist the sails. Other people can you know man the helm and and steer it under the watchful eye of one of your captains, of course. Yeah. And um, it's it's just a really neat experience for uh, a two-year-old child or a 102-year-old child. Um, yeah, thank you. It, we, you know, you, you never know who you're going to turn on to sailing. No. And, you know, it, it, as you said, it could be an 85-year-old person that used to sail when they were in their 20s. And all of a sudden, they get back at that wheel and all those memories flood back, and that person becomes almost unrecognizable to their friends as being this older person when they're reverting back to when they were the 20s. Right. It right. is wild it's, to see. It gives me goosebumps right now thinking well, about it's, it. It's, it's also a great way to see the bay and the harbor and, and just to, you know, you, you can look out at the water and it's a spectacular view here in Annapolis, but getting out on the water, and it doesn't matter whether you're out on a paddleboard or whether you're out on the Harbor Queen or the Woodwind or, you know, a kayak or whatever it is. Maybe it's a jet ski. Uh, it's, it's so much special to be able to look at the water from that perspective. I mean, everything looks better from the water, tastes better on the water. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Um, so you, you've got, you said team building. Do you do that corporate stuff? Yeah, lots of okay. corporate. We have, um, because we have both boats, we can easily put them into competition together or you can take out a large number of people and have two separate training groups. Okay. And uh, we really have them learn how to sail. So we break them up into four really small groups that learn very, very uh, particular stations. So one will learn how to navigate and be able to tell where they are at all times and be able to say, this is the course you need to go to get somewhere. And this is a soup to nuts. I mean, this is somebody that's never sailed before in their lives and they're having to 
can be, I guess. Can yeah. have to put it all together and figure out how to make it work. Absolutely. And especially when you have your team from your office and all your office dynamics going on. And especially if there is somebody that does know how to sail, do they step up? Do right. they step back? Or do they be the strength that uh, the team actually needs when they need them? Right. The glue that's sort of running yeah, around. Yeah. It's deck. very it's just... interesting how team dynamics and, you know, communication works out. Charters? Do you do charters too? Lots of private events. As Birthdays, private, reunions, schmooze cruises, weddings. you know, do you weddings. Do weddings? Okay. We do. We don't do many of them. They have to be special. Okay. Special people that re- know it's rain or shine and, you know, you're out there sailing and the boat's not going to necessarily be level. You know we have a true right. sailing experience. Yeah. We're not going to go and motor unless there is absolutely no wind. No. And you, and you do a couple special sailings every year. I know you've got the Great Schooner Race in the fall, which is at the very end of your season. Yes. And um, that's usually around boat show time, I think. It's right mm-hmm. after boat show. This year it is, yeah, because the power boat shows early, then sailboat shows after, and then mm-hmm. our schooner race is right afterwards. And by the way, I cannot not say this, but, you know, we mentioned Woodwind 2 is famous. Right. Well, Woodwind, the original Woodwind is very famous because she wins all the schooner races. <laughs> that's the one we do the races the bragging with. race. Yeah, that's, that's the boat that gets to do that. Bragging right. Because she's got the sleepover accommodations. Woodwind 2 doesn't have that. Okay. So on Woodwind, we also do a boat and breakfast where three couples can stay aboard the boat Saturday nights only. And they get a sunset sail. We come back to the dock. We orient them on where the light switches are and everything. And then they go out, have fun in Annapolis, come back to their cabin. And then breakfast is served in the morning overlooking the harbor. It's a floating bed and breakfast. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Boat and breakfast. Boat and breakfast. I see what you did there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of cool. But you, you also do the uh, Blue Angels, which fly unless they're under sequester. Yeah, we're sold out. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, then look, look for future years. Look yes. for future years. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but no. Fireworks cruises right. and wine, wine in the wind cruises. And, you know, every Wednesday night we race against each other. Every Tuesday night beer tastings. Monday nights history Mondays. I know I'm not going in order, but that's all right. Yeah. Well, now, now the history thing is really sort of fascinates me because I, I've been on one of those. And you get these docents that uh, just have a history of... Of the Chesapeake Bay. I mean, it may be talking about Annapolis. It may be talking about pirating. Pirating? Pirateering? Pirate? I'm not sure what the word is, but yeah, that's... We'll, you know, we'll let it idea. slide there. You, you get the idea. <laughs> um, you know, and, and just the history of the watermen and, and just how, how the bay really interacts with us. And those are really, really fascinating. They're very much akin to sort of like the Annapolis Maritime Museum. I know they do a Thursday night series in the winter. Yep. Um, so talk, similar to that. Yep. Talking about that. But again, you're at that point, as opposed to being adjacent to the water with the woodwind, you're right on the water when you're doing that. Yeah, and and you can point out the different historical spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's neat. What are you looking at for the future? You've got a couple more boats on order? and Nope. uh, (laughs) Going to keep it simple, stupid, right? Uh, Um, Just keep doing what we're doing. Remain the the most professional, you know, boating experience that you can have on the water. and, um, And just keep perfecting what we do. Well, one thing I'll say that, uh, I don't know whether you would say it or not, but I know I've seen several times, but the TripAdvisor, you tend to get awards from them. Yeah, Um, we've got their Certificate of Excellence five years in a row, which put us in their Hall of Fame. Which is, I I mean, that goes to, certainly goes to tell about whether you're doing a good job or not. Yeah. Um, So you're getting getting the good reviews. You're getting people that are coming back uh, time and time again. 26% of our guests are repeat customers. That's not a bad. And I wonder how many, do you have any idea of how many guests are coming as a referral from a customer? Um, Word of mouth Mm -hmm. is our our lead. It goes between the internet and word of mouth every year. And those are in the high 40s percent of where they're hearing about us from. What do you think your key to success for this many years is? That's a great question. I need to just pause and think about that for a second. <laughs> there, maybe there's a number of things. Maybe it's just, you know, it's luck. It's, you know, I mean, that certainly obviously plays a role in it at some point. Um, um, I, you know, I, I think it's first off finding the right people. The right people that work for us are the people who love the community, love to be enthusiastic about sailing that their passion comes from within that's hiring those people is the key to our success that's and that's something you can't fake you can't fake enthusiasm no you can't so that's what that's what i think 
are key to our success and constantly changing with the times. You know, in 93, the internet really wasn't wasn't sure. much. 95, 96, we were the first ones to get a website, I believe. Right. You know, and then keep moving with the times. Um, and then last year, creating a brand new beer for ourselves that through Hysteria you got Brewing. got a beer? Yeah. What's, what's, what's all this about? It's called Seize the Bay IPA, which is a pineapple ginger India pale ale. And uh, Hysteria Brewing Company in Columbia makes it for us. So then that's available on the Woodwind? On the Woodwind only or in their tap room. Oh, so I can't go to uh, the boatyard and... Nope, you can't go to any liquor store and buy it, only the tap room or while sailing on the Woodwind. And that's a pun on words, right? Seize the Bay, is that within S-E-A? Seize the Bay, of course it is. There's no Z in there? Yeah, (laughs) and it's got a great label with the boat and the Annapolis skyline and the bridge. And it's uh, something we're super proud of, and it is the perfect flavor for sailing in the summer on the boat. I know you love seeing the reactions of people when they get out there and you, you catch a good wind. It might be in the Wednesday night races and, and you're haul, hauling butt trying to beat the other captain. And I think that it's, uh, you know, do the kids, is it when a kid gets out there? Or is it when an older person rushes back? You had mentioned the memories coming back. Yeah, it- you know, it's it's all of it. You know, it's when, it's just when somebody gets it and is like starting to get wowed by the effect that, you can actually move through the water just by wind. And when they start processing it, and you can see it in their face, like, how is this happening? Why aren't we sliding? What's making us go straight? You know, and all of that, and then asking the questions about the science behind it, that's really fun. Hearing their stories about when they were, you know, older and sailing as a child and racing against their friends, that's fun. You know, there's so many different stories that you hear every single day. Never gets old, and, and, ever. And, and, I do the four trips four times a day for 26 years. It never gets old. And you've got a trunk full of them, I'm sure. I know that it's, I, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world because what I get to do is something I'm passionate about, and I get thanked like 186 times a day. That's amazing. And you, how many captains do you have? Um, I mean, we have about uh, four full-time and then one part-time. Okay. And they work- I, I didn't think you were running from, from boat to boat to boat. Yeah, no, and then they work all year round, so they're the ones doing the maintenance on the boats in the off-season. Okay, so when you put you pull them up out of the water in the yep. in the winter and give them a bath and right here in Annapolis, a little more than a bath. Yeah. <laughs> this year we worked on a lot of we got brand new rigging on Woodwind Two and uh, repainted all the masts and the booms and the spars. And then um, Woodwind got a lot of cosmetic um, makeovers as well. I uh, call it the spa time of yeah, year. The spa, the spa yeah. treatment. Now they're they are they wooden boats or are they they're composite. They're wood and epoxy with a fiberglass sheathing on the outside. Okay. Okay. In, I guess, real general terms, comparatively to other boats, fairly easy maintenance? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> My no, dad I mean, jokes that if um, if he knew he was going to have more than one made, then we would have had it made, had a mold made and made it out of fiberglass. Okay. It's not, not nearly the... Uh, I know the Annapolis Maritime Museum brought in the Wilma Lee, which is an old skipjack. Right. Which is all wooden. And I mean, that that's going to be an ongoing maintenance. I don't want to say nightmare, but it's... It's going to be a. It's going to be a problem. It's, as- it's going to be a money, money pit, mm-hmm. like all wood boats. And now we're not. We don't have that same problem because we don't have the caulking and where the fi- it, in theory it should remain a fiberglass boat in theory of maintenance. Right. However, once that fiberglass gets nicked, then it can impede the sure. the water into the wood and then cause some rot. Sure. The nice thing about it is that it can't travel very far. Uh, I'll tell you, the boats are spectacular. And again, the folks that have not been out on the woodwind, and I don't care whether you're local listening to this in town or from far, far away, uh, do it. And I, I do recommend actually a lot of the water tours that we have in Annapolis is something that even even the locals that think you know it all here should should experience because you will learn something new. You will see something new. And if nothing else on the woodwind, you'll be able to get out and have the wind blowing through your hair or what's left of it. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and 
and you know and just get out there in nature and have a you know the wind blowing and and the fresh air and stuff like that it's really quite a a different experience than driving down on forest drive hitting your steering wheel uh you know in, in traffic there what's the best way to get in touch with you and to get a ticket and all that kind of stuff so website schoonerwoodwind.com the you can get your tickets six days in advance up to six days in advance for any of our public cruises for our special events, you can buy them online right now and look at our specialty calendar online. And um, Or you can walk up or call. And I would say if, if you're looking for one of the specialty cruises, make sure you do it way early because they do sell out. I mean, we're talking only 48 people per boat. Yeah, and we, we usually limit them to less than that, yeah. just because they're out there for a little bit longer, usually on our specialty cruises. So True. then we we don't we don't have as many people on the boat. True. Well, Jennifer K, thank you, Captain K. Thank you. That's got a nice ring to it, Captain K. Yes. Um, but uh, thank you very much, and you know, thank you for bringing the woodwinds to Annapolis, um, and not to Charleston. Yeah. Or, or to, oh, or we, to wherever it was in Maine. We love it. Um, we love it here, and the community is amazing, and we can't think of a better place to do business. And anybody who's not been out, shame on you. Go do it. Schoonerwoodwind.com. Thanks, John. Thanks for listening to this special podcast for Ion Annapolis. Please be sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinions. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the I Am Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you your local news direct to your phone or tablet every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Subscribe on iTunes or Google Play.